For some perspective on how Apollo 11 first got off the ground, we spoke earlier with presidential historian Douglas Brinkley. His new book is American Moonshot, John F. Kennedy and the Great Space Race. What did the Great Space Race do for America? Oh, it lifted America's morale incredibly. You know, the 1960s, we were mired in the Vietnam War. Uh, we had dealt with the assassinations of John F. Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy and, um, and Martin Luther King. And then we kept thinking, can we get to the moon? Can we fulfill John F. Kennedy's pledge? I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. And so it was bipartisan in nature. It cost $25 billion. That's $180 billion in today's currency. Uh, but the American public said, let's do it. And they kept funding it uh, via congressional appropriations. If you try to look at it in the calculation made to get all that funding, the billions you talk about, that there were those in Congress who also said, why don't we spend this money at home, alleviate American poverty? There were critics of the moonshot, um, many. Um, on the right, Barry Goldwater, senator of Arizona, wanted the money to go to the U.S. Air Force. On the left, people like uh, liberals Walter Mondale, J. William Fulbright senators said, what you're suggesting, let's go put money into poverty programs and into schools. With that said, there was always enough appropriations, and particularly after John F. Kennedy was assassinated, uh, Lyndon Johnson changes the Cape Canaveral to the Kennedy Space Center, and we start going to the moon to fulfill John F. Kennedy's pledge in a way to honor the martyred, slain president. A lot of Americans may not know the involvement of Nazi scientists in the space program and a personal relationship between Kennedy and a scientist called uh, Werner von Braun. Who is he? Well, uh, von Braun was the great German rocketeer of the 1920s, 1930s, uh, and he works for Adolf Hitler in World War II. He's an SS officer, and he develops vengeance weapons for Hitler. But von Braun always has an eye for the moon and the stars. Uh, the big deal is how can you put a projectile 62 miles up, breaking gra Earth's gravity grip and going into outer space? And von Braun's the one who accomplishes this feat uh, during World War II. But alas, um, the war ends. Von Braun could be charged for war crimes for building these weapons and using Jewish slave labor um, to build them. And he makes a deal with the Truman administration to become part of the U.S. Army and start building missiles for the United States. And it's Werner von Braun's Saturn V that is Apollo 11 that brought our astronauts to the moon. And it was the American deal to bring those Nazi scientists to the U.S. that really irked and concerned the Soviets. Very much so, because we it was the greatest technology heist, maybe in world history, where suddenly we, we had all of the Nazi rocket and missile assets. There's a moral conundrum going on here of whether we should have done this, but we did. But from 1945 to 1949, the United States had a nuclear monopoly. We were the superpower. Suddenly, under Joe Stalin, Russia had the atomic bomb and the hydrogen bomb. They put up the first intercontinental ballistic missile, the R-7. Then, October of 1957, Sputnik, the first Earth satellite. So there's a feeling in the mid-50s that Eisenhower's asleep at the wheel, and we're getting our clock cleaned by the Soviet Union. And it's out of Sputnik that in 1958, Eisenhower um, creates NASA as civilian space exploration, announces Mercury astronauts, we pick seven, and then we start looking, can we put an astronaut into space? And then when Kennedy's president, the question is, can we put a man on the moon? Kennedy, you're right, knew that there was a value to this space program beyond the technology and the dominance. He knew this was almost a made-for-TV moment. TV's a big part of it. One of the great things about the United States' the space program, we had transparency. On May 5th, 61, we put up Alan Shepard, Mercury astronaut from New Hampshire, only 15 minutes up, 15 minutes down, but he became a space hero. And Kennedy loved basking in the glory of John Glenn and Gus Grissom and Scott Carpenter, Wally Schirra, and they became Kennedy's space cadets. Kennedy even had naysayers in his own family. You write about his dad 
calling White House aides and saying, damn it, I thought Jack was better than that. We're going to go broke with this nonsense. His own father was saying, what are you doing? Well, and so did everybody at NASA. Kennedy suddenly going to a joint session of Congress out of nowhere saying we're going to the moon. And at NASA, they said, you've got to be kidding me. We don't have any technology to do this. This is an, uh, a stunt. And so Kennedy got fully behind this. It was good TV ratings. It was technology was what the new frontier was about. He wanted to beat the Soviets. Um, and he saw the public pulling together on going to the moon, the Apollo program. And CBS our network also had its own role in this entire enterprise. Uh, not only were CBS executives consulted uh, in the idea of a space program and what the public reception would be, but then it was a documentary that inspired uh, President Kennedy as well. Absolutely. Oh, let's give Walter Cronkite a lot of credit um, for one. He adopted space as his ballywick. I'm Walter Cronkite. Cronkite, it was unabashed that the greatest accomplishment that the United States did in his entire lifetime was Apollo 11, was going to the moon. He was a, he was a fanboy of NASA. Could America rally and do something, this visionary, now and in a way that galvanizes people through various presidencies and keeps that commitment. That's what the idea of the moonshot means to people. Um, the idea that Americans, short of war, can do something grand collectively together. There's still more than nostalgia in Apollo 11. It's a kind of a fig leaf of hope that in the coming decades, the United States can once again get their act together and do big, bold things like we used to do. You can see our full interview with Doug Brinkley on facethenation.com.